so like Charles said, I grew up in Raleigh, um, but I moved to Chicago after college with my best friend. And from 2003 to 2011, I think I had seven apartments in Chicago. I was in my 20s, I was transitioning a lot. Um, but my last apartment was on Chicago Avenue, which was cool. And it was a third floor walk up in this old house um, above a Ukrainian deli. And it had a long hallway with bedrooms all along it. I had three roommates at any given time um, and had a living area in the front and a kitchen and a porch in the back. The uh, rooms were huge though, which was odd in um, Chicago. So it's, it was kind of like I had a studio apartment all to myself. And at that time I was kind of a mess. I had been trudging through Chicago winters. I was pretty unhappy. Um, I was working for a publishing company in downtown Chicago, uh, and the executives were kind of serial sexual predators. Um, there was a culture of sexual harassment that everybody just kind of accepted, but um, it made me feel pretty gross. I had also been dating a guy that on paper seemed awesome. Everybody loved him. He was really popular and we had a lot of fun, <clears throat> but something was missing and I, I just couldn't figure it out. So we were on and off and I was confused. So I spent a lot of time in, in that room by myself. Um, I was, you know, drinking too much, not eating well, staying out too late. I had lost touch with my best friend. Then Carl moved in. So Carl had been friends with one of my roommates in college and uh, we all played music. He was in a transition phase also and was looking for something new. And so she said, just come live in our apartment. We have an empty room right now and you can play music and hang out in Chicago. So he moved in and for the first you know, few months, I invited him along when we would go out um, to see shows, to get to know the music scene in Chicago, to meet people. And we would often end up sitting on the back porch late at night, smoking cigarettes, having deep conversations. Um, Carl's one of those people that just dives right in uh, to the real stuff. You know, he just doesn't mess with small talk and gets right to the nitty gritty. Um, and in those conversations, he made me realize I could do something about my situation. So, I did, I quit my job and I broke up with my boyfriend. I got a job, a temp job at Groupon, which is where some other of my coworkers had defected to as well. Um, and over the next few weeks, months, uh, Carl and I continued to have love, lovely conversations on the back porch and uh, we started to, you know, have little sparks, little, some chemistry have some feelings. So we started hooking up, which was kind of scandalous because we were roommates and we didn't tell anybody because we were roommates. Um, but yeah, there were feelings there. That chemistry that was missing from the guy I dated before, it was there with Carl. And that friendship was there because we had already been talking. We already established, um, you know, some good, some good conversations, good friendship. So when he told me he was moving back to Indiana, I was devastated. I was jealous because he was getting out of the city. I was sad because I wouldn't see him anymore. And then one night I was coming home from working at Groupon and I had stopped to get some groceries on the way to the bus. Um, it was probably late February, early March, one of those days in Chicago where the winter feels like it's never gonna end. And it was just warm enough to not be snowing, but it was rainy and cold and wet and gray and miserable. And as I was leaving the grocery store, I saw the bus coming across the street. And so I, I was hustling across the crosswalk to catch my bus. And I slipped in the middle of the downtown Chicago street, just bit it, just fell. Every, my stuff went everywhere. My groceries, my purse, my work bag, all that stuff. And even though, the amazing people of Chicago rallied around me. They helped me up. They helped me get my stuff back in my bags. They helped me across the street. I made my bus. 
I realized I needed to get out of Chicago. So on that bus ride home, as I was trying not to cry, and I was worried that my kneecaps were broken, I came up with a plan. And that plan was I was gonna tell everybody that Groupon fired me so I could tag along with Carl to Indiana. Now I was desperate and this was kind of crazy because it was just a, it was a flat out lie. But we do crazy things when we're desperate and sad and not taking care of ourselves. So I told Carl and he let me come to Indiana with him. The apartment we had in Indiana was eerily similar to the one we had in Chicago. It was a walk up in an old house. It was drafty, had a long hall with a living area at the front, kitchen and porch in the back. The, the floors were slanted. The foundation was just unstable, kind of like me and Carl's relationship. And because of that instability, Carl eventually found out that I lied and there were other challenges that we had because we were both still trying to figure ourselves out. We broke up. Uh, my parents rented a U-Haul. They came and helped me pack up all my stuff. My best friend came, she flew in and drove me back and I came home to Raleigh. I was able to get a summer job at my high school, which is an all girls boarding school. Um, coincidentally, also where my parents were living at that time because my mom worked on campus. So because I had a job, the um, school let me live in a dorm room, which was right next to my parents' apartment. And I was sleeping in a twin bed with Sesame Street sheets that I had from my childhood. And I just remember falling asleep. I mean, I was, you know, early 30s, I was falling asleep looking at Cookie Monster, thinking, what am I doing? But I found a great therapist and I started working on that stuff that I'd been struggling with. And I reconnected with some old friends and I was able to play music with my family and spend time with my brother and his kids. And one night, my mom and dad and I played this awesome, silly talent show at the high school. And afterwards, I went out to, um, you know, grab drinks with friends to kind of celebrate. And I met this guy. You know, we hit it off and uh, just ended up kind of talking all night. And I went home with him. And, you know, people say going home with somebody and it often doesn't really feel like home, you know. And it didn't that night. I was really sad. Um, and it, it took me a while to figure out exactly why. Why was I sad? And when, I, when it came to me, it was because I was in love with Carl. I was still in love with him after months of being in Raleigh. And this time, instead of lying, I decided to be honest. And so I wrote Carl an email and I said, oh, I was so nervous. I was like, he's going to hate me. He's going to think I'm gross but I just had to be honest. And I told him, I met this guy, I went home with him. I was really sad because I love you. So if we can't be together, I'm gonna have to figure out how to move on. So the next Monday, I, um, I had gotten another job. My temp job had ended. I was, I was working at Larry's and um, I was in the office and I got flowers, um, but they had no card. So I thought, who are these from? Are they from the guy from the other night? Or are they from Carl? Because I wrote him the email. So the only way I knew how to figure it out was I texted both of them. And the guy texted back and said, I don't know. Do you like them? Maybe they're from me. And that was just, I just was like, mm, no. Uh -uh. And I didn't hear from Carl until a few hours later, um, I got a call on my cell phone. So I stepped outside to talk and it was Carl calling to say that he, no, he didn't send me flowers, but he did get my email and he loved me too. And so he came to Raleigh to visit so that we could chat and reunite and figure it out. And uh, that's what he did. And a few months later, I moved back to Indiana to be with Carl. This time, we got a brand new apartment. We also got a dog. I got to hang out, really get to know his family and his friends. 
And that fall, we were on vacation in Florida and we decided to just go to the courthouse and get married. So we eloped. And then a few months later that winter, Carl had an opportunity to get bought out of his ownership shares at his company and get a good severance package. And he had been thinking about going back to school. So I said, Raleigh? Because what better place if you want to go to school than the Triangle, right? So he came back to Raleigh with me and now it feels more like home than it ever has. Uh, he's here with me. My best friend lives down the street. My parents are here, my brother and his kids. And what I realized is that he not only helped me get home to Raleigh again, but he also helped me come home to myself. We bought a house, we have two dogs, and we still have a back porch where we still sit and have long, deep, late night conversations. The end.